So recently I released Lightpack 1, which is a pack of LAMPs and HDR texture assets. And they are a bit special because they are using absolute HDR values. So I thought it would be interesting to make a video to explain to you what absolute means and uh, how it can help you to light your scenes. So for this example, I bought a scene from Shokofer and I would definitely recommend buying the scenes from Shokofer because they are pretty cheap, like less than 40 euros and they contain more than 50 assets, a really high quality, so really nice. And uh, I approached it as a way that someone would do, I would say. Uh, so I just took HGRI uh, maps from HGRI Haven She's a really great website. Uh, it's free first, but it's also like really high quality HRIs, 16K and, and the clamp. So you have the information from the sun, like this sun is actually from the HRI, it's not the lamp. So they are really good. But then I'm going to show you the problem with those uh, HRIs. It's not just HRI Haven, it's like most of the HRI that you can find. So you see that this is properly exposed. I just like put the HRI, I'm using a background with a strength of one, so the default in Blender, and then this is nicely exposed. But then if I change to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Sunset one, uh, you will see that the exposure of the scene is still kind of correct. The colors are different, and it seems that he doesn't do white balancing, or he doesn't do it too much at least, so... That's good because uh, that's what you would expect from sunset. But then if you go to night, uh, what you're going to see that, again, the exposure will feel kind of correct. And that's not how it works in real life. Like between those three lighting conditions, if you would take a picture with your DSLR, you would have to crank up the ISO by a lot. You would have to change the shutter speed. I mean, there is a huge gap of exposure between the three lighting conditions. And what you did in Blender was just changing the HRI. So those HR are very useful if you're doing look dev because you can just change the lighting and test your assets in different conditions. You don't have to change anything in the camera. You don't have to change the exposure. Everything is by default. It's already like properly lit. But if you have some projects where, let's say your client is asking you to to render this office uh, and with different lighting conditions, you want to see how it's going to look at night with the lights that you have in there. You want to see how it's going to look during the day. Then it's going to be more work. Let's let's have a look at this uh, HRI at night. Like I feel like it's too bright already. So I, I need to divide it by 10 to have this feeling at night, you know? And then I would have to, uh, to add a light. So I'm just going to place my cursor here and then I'm just going to add spotlight on the wall. So I'm just going to move it a bit outwards. Here you go. But then you see that it doesn't do anything. It's 10 watts and it doesn't do anything. So I can already tell you that there is something wrong here because a light that is 10 watts should already like emit and be visible. But in that case, you have to boost it to 200, for instance. Uh, now it starts to be visible and uh, I feel like it's a bit too white. So I'm going to change the color. I'm going to make it a bit warmer, you know. Uh, so yeah, that now it, it, it kind of lights my scene. Maybe 200 is not even enough, like 300, I don't know. Uh, but then you go back to the the, the sunny day. Uh, so you, you have done your lighting, you have placed all your lights, you have changed the power of all of your lights. And then you go back to the sunny day and... Uh, you're gonna see that something is wrong because uh, first, now the HRI is not correct. Uh, Zero point one is is not bright enough, so I have to put it back to one. And then uh, my light has the exact same look; it has the exact same intensity as during the night. So then I would have to go back to my all my lights, and I would have to I don't know divide them again by ten. And then okay, now it feels more realistic. Like that's how a spotlight would look like during the day because. It won't light that much, actually. So there's a lot of guesswork when you have to do that. Uh, it's the same in games if you light a dynamic time of day. Like, uh, imagine you need to make your light feel correct at all the times of day. Uh, this is just super hard to do. Uh, so what the light pack is trying to, to help you with is just providing those lamps and those HRIs uh, that have not been pre-exposed. So that means that the values that... Have been used to create them, they are correct in relation to each other compared to these SGRI from HRI Haven that have been pre exposed, uh, which means that they have shifted the intensity of the pixels just so they all are in the same range, they all are like kind of similar intensity. 
So let's have a look at how it would look if you use content from Lightpack. So what I use is the Simple Asset Manager. Uh, this is the free version. So I'm just showing you with the free version because that means that you don't have to buy anything. You can just use it as is. And uh, I've set it up so I have my, uh, my assets in there. So I'm just going to use one of my HRI. And in that case, uh, I'm going to take a sunny day. So this one, just to compare with, with that sunny day from uh, HRI Haven. Oh, I need to click happen. And you can see that the intensity is actually not that bad. The, the brightness is kind of correct. It's a bit underexposed. So uh, the way I would approach it is I would use my add-on photographer uh, to change the camera exposure. So uh, if I select my camera here in those settings, then I, I can just control the exposure. So you can do it manually with all the DSLR like values, but I'm, I'm not going to do it now because I'm just going to talk about exposure. I'm just going to show you the difference of exposure. So I'm just going to use that slider. And uh, yeah, if I want to expose it a bit better, then I would say I have to move it uh, to 8.3. And now if I change it again, like if I change my lighting and I want to uh, to have uh, like a night setting, so let's say that I want to take this uh, street at night, so it has a lot of lights from, from restaurants and stuff. Sorry, I also forgot to press happened. And then you can see that this is much darker, like, when I'm using it, it's just much darker. So now I have to go to my camera and I have to change the exposure again to just change the, the intensity and the brightness of the image. And this is correct. This is how it should be. This is the, the, the actual difference of intensity that there is between those two lighting conditions. Now, if I want to use the assets from the light pack, so again, I'm going to place my cursor on the surface. Something that is uh, good to use is you can choose the orientation to be the geometry. So it's going to align the cursor to the normal of the face that you clicked on. And uh, now I'm going to use those assets and I'm going to place this uh, exterior spotlight. Exterior, but it can work inside as well. So I'm just going to use that. And uh, I'm specifying that I'm placing it at the cursor position and then I'm going to follow the rotation of the cursor. So now it's going to place it exactly how you would expect. And you see the intensity of the light, like that feels realistic already. Like it has a nice warm tone and uh, it's a proper intensity that you would expect at night. And then if we go back to uh, the HDR during the day, uh, then what you would see is that everything is going to feel much brighter because the uh, camera hasn't adjusted to, for the exposure. So now I'm just going to do that. Go back to 8.5, something like this. And then you can see that the light has a much smaller contribution to the scene. And that's how Lightpack uh, can help you. Like when you have different lighting conditions, you don't have to go through your lamps, change all the intensities. You only have to change one setting, which is the camera exposure. And this is what happens when you take photos outside. Like your light bulb at home has the same intensity uh, during the day and during the night. So why would you go and change all your light intensities? You wouldn't do that. You would just change your camera settings. So that's what I'm trying to suggest as a, as a better way to work when you, when you light photorealistic scenes. So I can always add more uh, assets. So I don't know, I can maybe add a, a ceiling lamp. So I'm just gonna put my cursor on the top and I would just happen it here. And then it adds a bit of light, but again, not too strong because that's during the day. If I go to another night uh, light and I would just go to soccer sunset. This is a very dark sunset because I don't have any street lights around and I'm like in the middle of a soccer field. So, and, and what you would see is, uh, uh, again, I need to adjust my exposure and uh, there's a very warm tone coming from the lights and you are not supposed to change that. Like the light bulb has a color temperature. In that case, it's very warm, so it's around 2700 maybe but what you do in general is that you, you change your camera white balance to compensate for that so that's exactly what i'm going to do here i'm going to go to the white balance and then um, either i lower it myself and you will see that if i want to make something like you can see that now it starts to be more gray than orange and i have a value that is kind of close to the actual color temperature of the lamp or you can also just uh, pick and uh, pick on this wall that is supposed to be gray, for instance, and that compensates. And uh, and that's good because now you can see that the exterior, um, the sky, has a much bluer tone because you adjust it to 
the lamps inside that are orange. So you keep that relation between the lamps and the environment, and that that's that gives you much better and much more realistic results, like very easily. I hope that this is going to help you to 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 light your scenes. I didn't want to lock anything because I still feel that you need artistic control on the stuff. So. You can actually select the lamp. Uh, in some cases, you have several lamps, so you have to select the main lamp. Uh, if you look in the outliner, you're going to find it. Like this is going to be uh, like this one, for instance. The other ones are below it. So if I take the main spot, then these values, they are not locked. If I take the other ones, you will see like they have drivers, but this one doesn't. And this one you can change. So if you want to turn off a light, you can just put it to zero. What you're going to see now is that there is a bug with Blender. I don't know if it's a bug, but it's in the viewport the drivers are not always updated so uh, sometimes you have to restart the viewport and then that would just fix that link i don't know i haven't seen it in every scene i don't know if it's different versions of blender but i, I notice it now that i'm doing a tutorial so so you can always change those and you can just uh, like make them super bright if you want and you can change the color if you want and what is good is that the emissive of the lamp will follow. So if I if I take this one, it's going to be more obvious. If I change the color and I make it blue, then you see like the the, the lamp shade actually becomes blue. And then if you feel like you went crazy and you did mistakes and stuff, you can always go back and revert. So in the custom properties, I've exposed the default values. So you can just Control C on the swatch, Control V, and then you just like get back the proper values. And this in that case is 25, so it's correct. So yeah, you can play around. And you can uh, do a lot of things with those lamps. Um, and also, this is called introduction because this pack contains a lot of varied lights. So I did it on purpose. I wanted to give you as many references as possible. So um, you have like light bulbs, you have neon lights, you have emergency lights, you have street lights, just like a broad range of things. You even have a backdrop building. So actually, it would be fun to just use... Uh, I'm just going to put it there and just put it in the in the backdrop. You can see that it has a, a nice parallax also. Like I, I had a bit of fun just making it with parallax and uh, some wobbliness on the reflection of the glass, uh, those kind of things. Um, so yeah, and now, uh, yeah, the white balance is a bit too, too much. Like I went too much in the blues, but uh, you can just fix that by selecting the camera again. And then I'm just going to go more like this. Yeah. So this is more realistic. Though this pack is like very varied. Like you have a lot of different things. Uh, so just play with it and uh, give me feedback. Let me know if you, if you find it useful. Uh, if you make cool scenes as well, I'm super happy to see your, your results. Uh, one thing I wanted to show is that when you import them, like they, everything is under one object. I kept, the object separated for different reasons, but it's also like, so you can go in there and then change, for instance, uh, the, the, the bevels and the subdivisions. Like I made it modular, so you can always change the asset and optimize them away if you need. Then when you want to duplicate, there, there are several ways. I think the easiest way to duplicate all of them is to select the collection that they come with and duplicate that collection. So you can duplicate linked, which means that if you modify one of the meshes, then it would be modified for the others as well. Uh, but even if you duplicate just the collection, uh, what happens is that the, uh, I'm going to show you now, the emissive mesh, uh, we still share the same material. So if I select this one and I move it on the side and I decide to change that lamp, it is not going to be linked with that lamp. So this lamp will stay orange, but this one, for instance, will turn blue. But you see that it doesn't affect the material because they're sharing the same material still. So if you want to create the same asset, like you want to duplicate it, but be able to give it different colors and everything, then the right way is to append it from uh, the, the manager again. And then they would create a second material and then you can give them different colors. But yeah, that's it. I have other videos coming soon about physically based lighting. And one would be about the theory. I would explain everything about the, the light you need. Also like mention a bit about physically based rendering. And then there will be one that is more in practice, how, how to use physically based lighting uh, or, or to not use it as well, because you will see that not everyone uses it. And I will explain why. 
So uh, stay tuned and uh, see you soon.